week's main news. Supreme Court does not release fatwa. Azerbaijan lacks macro crime, says International Observation Mission. East for the protest to demand safety, releases preliminary comments on election results. Azerbaijan Popular Front Party and Soviet Coalition working with it will demand new elections. 2010 parliamentary elections cannot be deemed free and fair, says Centre for Election Monitoring and Mass Education. The European Court of Human Rights, ruling for the release of imprisoned journalist Emila Fatulayev, was considered at the extraordinary plenary meeting of Azerbaijan's Supreme Court today. The plenary meeting upheld the decision of the Strasbourg Court, which ruled that Fatulayev's rights had been violated in two criminal charges weighed against him by the Azerbaijani government, threatening terror and the incitement of national hatred. Therefore, the Supreme Court ruled to terminate the criminal cases on those charges, though they did not waive the charges of tax evasion. Thus, the plenary meeting issued a general decision to release Fatu Live. However, he was not freed because of the July 6 drug possession charges that earned him another two and a half years in jail. The Azerbaijani government can claim to have formally executed the ECHR judgment, but the journalist remains behind bars. What will happen with the 28,000 euro compensation for Fatu Live remains unknown. On April 22, 2010, the European Court of Human Rights ruled for the immediate release of Fatu Live. The Azerbaijani government subsequently filed an appeal with the Grand Chamber of the ECHR. However, the Grand Chamber upheld their original decision on the 4th of October. On December 29, 2009, heroin was found on Fatu Live's person while he was incarcerated in prison number 12. On the 6th of July, 2010, Fatu Live was found guilty of drug possession and sentenced to two and a half years in prison. Fatu Live and his colleagues are convinced that the drugs were planted in his clothing and shoes as a means of keeping him behind bars. The parliamentary elections in Azerbaijan were held peacefully with the participation of all parties. However, the election demonstrated that there has been no significant progress in the country's democratization, says the statement by International Observation Mission, comprising OSCE, Council of Europe, and European Parliament representatives. Released today. The observers noted that the restrictions on press freedom and freedom of assembly, along with some opposition candidates' inability to register, led to the weakening of the opposition and made the genuine political debate impossible. These actions curtailed the development of a competitive environment and created unequal conditions for candidates. All of this impeded their voter choice, said the statement. The voting procedures were assessed positively in 90% of the election precincts observed on the voting day, while serious problems were registered in 10% of the precincts. One of the serious problems was multiple voting, a single person putting several ballot papers in the ballot box. Above and beyond what it is already doing, Azerbaijan needs to work harder to achieve a true pluralist democracy, said the head of OSCE Parliamentary Assembly's pre-election observation mission and OSCE PA Vice President Wolfgang Gorasa. Economic development and stability in Azerbaijan can be enhanced through liberalization and democratization. Independent observers reveal violations in word counting, prosecution of oppositional observers, and the placing of numerous ballot papers in ballot boxes. Azerbaijan should take necessary steps to ensure democratization, said the head of European Parliament delegation. Unfortunately, our monitoring revealed the absence of favorable conditions for fully democratic elections. Restrictions on fundamental liberties, bias of mass media, and serious violations on the voting day give us real cause for concern. We are ready to assist the Azerbaijan government in implementing its obligation to the OSCE, said Ambassador Ozzy Glover of the OSCE election observation mission. The results of Azerbaijan's November 7th parliamentary elections do not accurately reflect the political will of the people, said IRFS chairman Amin Hussainov in a press conference on the parliamentary election results. IRFS employee Russell Jafarov spoke about the pre-election conditions. 
He reported that the elections were conducted in an undemocratic climate, that journalists were prevented from carrying out their professional duties, and that multiple violations had occurred during the voting. These violations could affect the voting results. Based on pre-election monitoring, Jafarov reported that freedom of expression in Azerbaijan is subject to severe restrictions that freedom of assembly is neither guaranteed nor protected, and that unsanctioned political rallies have been forcibly broken up. He added that there have been very few radio or television programs focusing on the elections during the pre-election period or the campaign itself. that political parties running in the elections did not receive equal media coverage, that ruling YAP party chairman, President Ilham Ali, was covered positively and extensively, and that state TV channels have conducted a smear campaign against the opposition. IRFS employee Idris Abasov spoke about the serious legal violations committed on voting day. He mentioned, among other things, the problem with single voters casting multiple votes, ballot stuffing, and the expulsion of registered observers out of voting stations. In light of the mass violations on voting day, IRFS chairman Amin Hussainov unveiled IRFS's recommendations to the government. IRFS calls upon the Azerbaijani government to investigate the legal violations that occurred during the voting to bring perpetrators to criminal responsibility, to annul the results of constituencies where serious violations occurred, and to immediately release the imprisoned journalists and bloggers, and to ensure freedom of assembly for all. APFP Musavat Coalition. Voting rigged. We demand new elections. The Azerbaijan Popular Front Party, Musavat Coalition, considers the 2010 parliamentary elections undemocratic and unfair. APFP and Musavat party leaders announced at a press conference today. Even before the election, the government took measures to place restrictions on the political conditions. The electoral code was changed, the pre-election campaign period was truncated, and the usual allocation of funds from the state budget for candidates was abolished. Moreover, the imprisonment of journalists and bloggers and restrictions on freedoms of speech and assembly affected the pre-election climate. The authorities prevented 60% of the opposition bloc candidates from registering. Not satisfied with all of this, the authorities resorted to total fraud during the voting and counting, said Musavat leader Isa Gambar. Gambad said that after the voting, observers were driven out of the election precincts and that a number of false ballot papers were thrown into the ballot box. The elections held by the government exceeded our expectations in terms of fraud. If the elections were at all transparent, APFP Musavat candidates would have won in all election constituencies. Yesterday's events consisted of more than just election rigging. Azerbaijan is getting close to Uzbekistani-style politics. APFP Chairman Ali Kerimli emphasized. Opposition leaders also said that they will fight for the annulment of these voting results and for new elections. Given the violations during the 2010 parliamentary elections and the general election environment, we do not believe that these elections can be deemed free and fair. The director of the Elections Monitoring and Democracy Training Center, Anad Mamadli, announced at a press conference. According to Mamadli, serious law violations were more common when compared to previous year's elections. The restrictions surrounding political liberties, including press and speech freedom, freedom of assembly, and association, remained in place during the election period. The candidate registration phase was accompanied by serious violations. As a result, the election took place without enough alternative candidates. Political parties and candidates were not campaigning under equal and competitive conditions. Candidates, voters, and observers faced numerous pressures and threats. Mamadlu said that there had been a significant number of violations in the election precinct, notably instances where the same person voted several times using false ballot paper. For this reason, he doubted the accuracy and veracity of the voting results. EMDTC Executive Director Basir Suleymanli said that the center's 40 observers, who have been working with the EMDTC for a number of weeks during the run-up to the election, refused to continue their work as a result of pressure by local executive officers. According to the director, the harassment of observers was more frequent in Nakhchivan, Sabirabad, Guba, and Gusa. According to the EMDTC recommendations, 
the Election Commission should investigate all the appeals and complaints, and all political parties should be provided with free and equal conditions to be represented in government.